Hello and welcome to part two of Speedy Navigation. In the first part we looked at one single macro, Smart Finder, that was able to set up a huge range of different search patterns to find different things in the text, years, email addresses, headings, footnotes and so on. This time I'm looking at a lot of different macros and the names will appear on screen so you don't have to remember them. The purpose of these macros is around the general th theme of jumping around the text looking at different things, comparing things, and then of course getting back to the place where you started from. So let's find some text to play with. Here we go. And some macros. What are we going to look at? We're going to look at these first. We've got uh, six macros there in pairs, up and down pairs, or forward and back. Um, first is instant find. So if we're trying to find let, a phrase such as that you can, you can select it and you can use instant find down and it will move you straight to the next occurrence of that uh, phrase. And if you then use find forwards, find FWD, then you can look at the next one and the next one and the next one. Find back goes back up. If we look at, if we want to go uh, backwards, uh, or rather up the text, so if I'm looking for the word change the, and I use instant find up, there isn't one. That's good. So we can then go down and we can say, let's have a look at this, and instant find up, and we find the previous one. Okay, now you don't have to select the text if all you want is a single word. So if I'm looking for this, I'd click somewhere in the word and run instant find down and I find the next this. But then the third pair we've got find forward case and find back case. So what that means is that when we started we went from capital T this but the first thing it found was a lowercase. So if I use find forward and find back, it finds any of them, whether they are whatever the case is. If I use find forward case and find back case, it will only find the ones with initial capital. So I can go up again, back up to the top, and each time you hear it bong, it means you've tried to look for something further up or further down, and there isn't one. So let's go back up to the top and see what we've got next. Uh, next we've got instant find wild down wild. So we're looking at wild cards and for this one uh, is this is particularly useful if you're looking at the analysis created by Dockerlize. So in each of the sections there um, or at least in some of them you've got a, a wild card find and replace um, which will find the particular thing that it is interested in. So if we look at serial commas, this find and replace here, if I select it and then I run instant find down wild, it goes to the first thing that looks like a serial comma. In other words, two words followed by and with all commas. So if I look at the next one and the next one and the next one, so each of those fo follows that same pattern if I select instead the other one for no serial comma and do find uh, instant find down wild then I get the same thing but without the comma before the and. Now the other particular way that this instant find down wild is useful is if you're trying to actually develop a wildcard find. So if we have a look at the wildcard find we've got there, uh, if you've got good eyesight then okay you can see it and if you're trying to change that find and replace or, that, or rather that find, uh, you know you're, you're trying to develop it, you're trying different things, it's very difficult when it's so small. So if we get rid of that, if we type out as it were the we paste the find and replace there, we can now see it very easily and so we may decide okay we want to try using um, 
a different format within the wildcard, a different element in the in the wildcard search. So we change the thing we're trying to work on and we check it by seeing if that works. So it's a, a very useful way of developing a wildcard. Now if you remember in the previous video we looked at Smart Finder and for hyphenation there was a useful trick find hyphen and it will find any occurrence of those two words separated by either a space or uh, a hyphen or actually a dash or as one single word. Uh, now the next macro I want to look at this time is um, is sort of a, an aside really. We can actually count those if we use hyphen space word count. So that tells us how many times it occurs as one word, two words, hyphenated or separated by a dash. In this case is nine and three. So suppose now that we want to do some changing um, and we're going to use the next two which um, is prepare to replace down. So if we run prepare to replace down then it pulls the selected text into the find and replace box and puts it also in the replace. So if we're wanting to change, suppose we're wanting to change the spaced, I see what I mean about them being too small. Uh, right, so if we want to find the spaced version and decide that we want whether we want to actually change that to a hyphenated version. Um, we've got two macros here, find, replace, stay and find, replace, go. However, I forgot to mention prepare to replace down TC off. And the point of that is that uh, if you're wanting to find and replace something but without the track changes on, that one will switch the track changes off and then set up the find and replace for you. So find and replace stay means uh, find uh, the word in question or the phrase in question, make the change but don't move on. So it's found on screen there. If I say I want to change it but stay then it makes the change and so I can check that it's actually changed it as I want. So if I now find the next one then I, if I do find replace go it changes it. You probably hardly see it it changes it and moves on. But if I do find replace stay, it changes it but doesn't move. So that's quite useful. Now, uh, let's get rid of that, just cluttering the place up. Um, if we're looking for a phrase in uh, a different file, then it can be useful to be able to select something, copy it, and then go and find that in another file. So what, for that I use find clip top. In other words, find what's in the clipboard in the other document. So if I go into this other document and do find clip top, it goes to the top of the document and then looks for keeping in mind, which was the phrase that I had copied. However, we can do that, if I go back up to the top again, we can do that also by using, uh, where is it? we can use find same place so if I go to here and do find same place then it goes to the top and finds that phrase but what it's actually doing, or you can't see it, is looking through all the documents that are open in the computer at the moment and there are some other documents you can't see which are open so it's looked through those, it has not found uh, keeping in mind but it has found it there. However I happen to know that that phrase is also in another of the documents so if I use um, the reverse version of that find same back then it goes the opposite through the files in the opposite order so this time it finds the phrase in another document that's in the Dockerlize document. 
So we can try that again. So if I start from this document and search forwards, then it finds, keeping in mind, in that file, so go back again. If I do it backwards, then it finds that phrase in the other file. So if you're looking at um, comparing three documents and want to be able to look at phrases from one document in two others, then you can quite easily uh, jump backwards and forwards quickly from one to the other. Right, so let's get rid of that one. We're at the top of that document. Go to the top of this one and see what we've got next. Find some place. Yes, we've done those. Right, so now we're going to look at highlighting. Uh, again, same idea of moving around the text. This time we're going to be looking at highlighting. So, if I use Find Highlight Down, then it finds the first highlighted bit of text, so it's found that, and then it goes on further down, and it's actually looking for the turquoise, but you can, if I select that and do it, it will then just look for the greens, so it goes through the green highlights. If I just select something that's not highlighted, and run find highlight down then it says um, do you want to select this color or just click cancel if you want to select any color so if I say yes then it's only going to uh, find the turquoise and not the green there's some turquoise under there but never mind let's ignore that uh, same thing with coloration so we can use find color down and then it goes through the coloured text. Same sort of idea. Now the next thing we're going to look at is where is it? It's comments. So for that one we just need to be a bit see the whole of this document because the comments are going to be in bubbles out to the right. So if I look for the next comment, there's the next comment and the next comment, so we can go through the comments. When it gets to the end it'll uh, tell you, and go back up again through the comments, and then it got to the top and it stops. Um, now uh, the other one is to look, so move it away, that was comments, so you've got comment, next comment, previous, and then next change, that's just the edits. So there is actually, this facility is in Word itself, but the facility in Word will look at every item, it will include the comments. So if you're wanting to look through the edits as opposed to the comments, then my macro will just find the edits. So it, f it finds a deletion there, an insertion, it skip. It doesn't look at the comment, it just goes straight to the next one which is a font change, font change and so on. So it's going through the edits and then back up through the edits. OK, let's go back up to the top and um, we've got just a few more now. Um, bookmarks. So the idea here is that if you're working in the document somewhere and you've got to here, then you can insert a bookmark with uh, bookmark temp add. So that's it, uh, but to use the macros. So if I go off somewhere else and look at something else, then I can use bookmark temp find and it gets me back to that place where I was. And if I use, if I go and search something, suppose I look for experience, so I can look through those. If I now use bookmark temp find, then it finds the macros in the book, but if I run it again, it finds the experience word. So there are actually two temporary bookmarks in there and so if you just run the uh, temp find it will find one or the other so that's another useful idea and the final one is called jump screen and that's uh, it's just something I find useful um, if you're reading your way through the text here blah 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 and you get to hit the language groups um, rather than trying to scroll up 
and then losing track of where you are in the paragraph, I've got jump screen. So if I run that, so you've got language groups there, that comes up to the top. So I carry on reading through and I get to small programs there and I run that and that jumps it up to the top. So I find that quite useful. Well, I've got through and that is the end. So thanks for watching.